Around the world and from CBS News headquarters in New York, this is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Former Health Secretary Joseph Califano said cigarette smoking is the largest preventable cause of death in America. And through the years, medical researchers have offered widely publicized reasons for avoiding cigarettes. Now, as Charles Crawford reports, they're adding another one, radiation. Um, and I sit here and try to convince that person to stop smoking. The forces are against me. It's very hard to do. So, Dr. Thomas Winters and a colleague at the University of Massachusetts Medical Center did what a lot of angry Americans do. They wrote a letter to the editor, in this case, to the New England Journal of Medicine. The letter warns that there may be a significant risk of lung cancer, not only for smokers, but also for non-smokers who inhale cigarette smoke. Winters cites studies done as far back as 1964, showing that tobacco plants grown with phosphate fertilizers contain radioactive polonium-210. We're saying that there's another element in tobacco that is helping induce or promote or start, initiate the lung cancer. Fact, radioactive polonium-210 is found in tobacco and in the smoke from a burning cigarette. It is also fact that when the smoke is inhaled, bronchial surface cells are bombarded by the alpha-emitting particles. The theory is that the radioactive smoke may be a triggering event, producing a subtle change in the bronchial cells, and that the constant radiation exposure ultimately results in lung cancer. A recent government study reports a person smoking a pack and a half a day is exposed to a radiation dose equal to 300 chest x-rays in one year. However, the American Tobacco Institute says the idea that radioactive particles in cigarette smoke are harmful is just an idea, not a fact. We don't have any definitive evidence that this is in fact harmful. And uh, I think to talk about product changes without some sort of proof uh, is, is pretty valueless. Nevertheless, the most recent Surgeon General's report concludes it may be prudent to reduce the amount of polonium-210 in tobacco products. Charles Crawford, CBS News, Worcester, Massachusetts. Now 15 minutes before the hour. Letters to the editor. Well, the people who did the research on these alpha, high, highly radioactive alpha particles are very credible researchers. Uh, the research was picked up and kind of promoted just for a couple of years while as they did the research, I think in the early 64 and then again in 75, Ed Martell out in Boulder started the research, which he is actively doing at the present time. But there's really been not enough support from the National Cancer Institute on this. And uh, you know, the, the tobacco industry continues to deny that chemicals even cause cancer. Uh, they will continue to refute the argument that smoking causes cancer. So I think their credibility stands uh, to be examined, uh, not my credibility. You uh, raised again in the letter to the editors the question of how the risk to non-smokers in a smoking environment. Uh, what is the message that, that letter, your letter is trying to get through? The message is that most of the studies that have been done have been on the active smoker and no one has ever done the study on the passive smoker. You know, the person sitting in the room, in a congested room where a lot of smoke, uh, either the side stream smoke that comes out that, that doesn't come right, go right down into the smoker's bronchial tubes, and that in fact has um, as much radioactivity in it as the smoker is getting. And these are insoluble particles that kind of float and stay in the air and uh, allowing the secondary or the passive smoker to inhale these. And it ultimately radiates that one little area of the bronchial tube where it splits and uh, this, this kind of builds up over many years and ultimately it is, uh, we feel it is a definite initiator of the cancer. What you're saying then is the radioactive substances in the tobacco and the tobacco smoke by themselves may not be cancer causes but combined with other factors. I think that, I think that they may even be the initiator or the very initial thing Triggering that, that affects a cell to go awry which is the mutation theory of cancer these cells continue to get bombarded as a smoker continues to smoke uh, and then over you know many years ultimately one cell will then continue to proliferate and, uh, and you know they keep doubling doubling and you end up with cancer of the lung. You're one of the new breed of uh, specialists uh, I think you told me you you call yourself an occupational hazard internist. Oh, I work you also me. deal then with patients. There must have been an ulterior motive to writing this letter to making your job easier to convince yeah. people they should stop smoking. I actively practice medicine and then I'm an occupational health doctor too. 
where I work, deal with workers in the workplace who are exposed to hazards. S smoke is one of their hazards. But as I sit and talk to a, a patient uh, day to day, the most important health uh, uh, intervention that they could take uh, part in themselves is to stop smoking. And I sit there and I become very frustrated and I'm, and I'm trying to you know, convince them to stop smoking when in fact uh, the Surgeon General is on my side and, tell, and, and supporting what I'm doing. But then tobacco subsidies continue to go to the farmers. So these, the people in their subconscious or even in their conscious mind uh, look at this and, and they can continue to deny that this is going to affect their body, their heart, their lungs. And they pick the glimmer of hope that, well, the government's giving money uh, to the tobacco growers. It must be all right. And, and it makes my job really hard. Uh, and it's very frustrating. I spend a lot of time dealing with uh, a problem that, that really uh, has been dropped upon us. Uh, the tobacco really never got, got to be, was never evaluated like every drug that comes on the market. The FDA scrutinizes it very closely. Tobacco has never had that close scrutiny until, you know, over the past years some studies have been done. What happens with a patient when you tell them, because I th suspect a lot of people are not aware of this radioactive uh, component mm -hmm. to cigarette smoke. What happens to the patient when you tell them, you know what you're inhaling has radioactive particles? Yeah, I think it's, it's another lever that I can use to educate people and uh, you bet I use it. And uh, they, uh, I think the sensitivity of radiation, uh, people's consciousness has been raised over the last several years. Radiation is always a scary thing. Yeah, people, uh, you know, you, you say that you're going to do an x-ray of their, of their chest, they say, well, doctor, do I really need that x-ray? And that's fine. I, I'm glad to be asked that question. So they're real sensitized to radiation, and they, they hear that they're taking radiation into their lungs, and that it's going to radiate this one area of the lungs, which it in fact happens to be the most common area for the, the cancer of the lung to occur, right where these particles line up in the lungs. Uh, they I can move more people away from smoking. So it helps me as an educational tool. Sure. Dr. Winters, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Diane Charles. Thank you, Charles. And we'll be back in a couple of minutes to sum up the news of Thursday morning. The time now, eight minutes before the hour.